Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Alain, the capital of agriculture for the United Arab Emirates. We're here at Red Sea to see a range of technologies that they've developed to grow food in arid climates. Let's go take a look. Now the first technology I want to show you is iris, also called second sky. So you can see behind me there's two different materials. These are both different plastic materials and this first one, which is yellow, is what you commonly see in greenhouses all around the world. Now this works okay, but one of the main problems with this is that a lot of the extra heat and light that comes into the greenhouse makes this area where the plants grow too hot. So when I touch this surface, it's not actually that hot, but here in the middle, it's really, really, really warm. And that makes it difficult to grow in the hottest times of the year. Now as we transition over into the iris area, we'll see that actually the edge feels warmer because it's capturing a lot of that extra radiation and preventing it from disturbing the plants in the middle. Now their research shows that they have savings about seven to 10 degrees less in temperature as a result of iris. What's the coolest thing about this is it's a really simple technology. Greenhouses change their plastic material all the time whenever they get worn out. So it's easy to replace your current material with iris and get enormous savings and grow year round. Let's go to number two. Now while this technology isn't exclusive to Red Sea, it demonstrates their sustainability commitment. As you can see here, we've got on-site solar panels, which power about 30% of the energy consumption for this one hectare facility. And it's not just your typical solar panels here. They're also trying to communicate to staff members by covering their parking areas with solar panels too. So let's talk about innovation number three that we're seeing here at Red Sea. This is an evaporative cooling pad, which is very common in many greenhouses around the world. Basically water goes through this sort of cardboard material and it's pulled to the other side of the greenhouse through fans. Again, very, very common. But the problem is it uses a lot of water. So what can we do to reduce the water use or maybe use more sustainable sources of water? So this is SWEC by Red Sea. And what it does is it uses salt water. So they have a specific technology that allows them to use salt water instead of fresh water, meaning that you can grow more food in places that don't have an abundance of fresh water. So we've talked a lot about hardware and different equipment that can help growers grow in this difficult climate. But what about what's happening below the surface? What about the roots? This may look like a normal tomato plant to you, but in fact, what's happening here is we have a healthy root stock that's bred by Red Sea combined with a commercial tomato variety that they want to grow with. Now, that might not make sense to you, it's kind of complicated, but basically what it means, we're getting the benefit of a healthier root combined with a commercially viable breed, and we're gonna be able to grow that in this region. That happens a lot more in Europe, but it's not very common in this part of the world, which is what Red Sea is pushing forward in combination with all this other technology. So welcome to another one of Red Sea's greenhouses. The difference is, is that in this one, we're testing iris. So if we look up at the top here, we can see that there is basically clear sky, but there's actually a second sky layer over that, which is iris. And what that's doing is that's keeping out that radiation. Now the temperature in here feels relatively similar to the other greenhouse, but the difference is we're using 20% less water and less energy as well. And that's because we are again, avoiding that extra radiation that we don't need and just bringing in the light that we need to grow the best tomatoes possible in the desert. And again, one of the main value propositions for that is it allows us to grow year round in extreme hot climates. Now, the final technology I wanna show you from Red Sea is what brings it all together. As you can imagine, these high-tech farms are gathering all kinds of information that are necessary for the plants to grow. Things like EC, pH, air temperature, humidity, what's happening in the soil, what's happening in the water. And all of that data goes into Cortex by Red Sea. That's the brain of the system. So over time, they're capturing real data, real-time data, and analyzing it to give insights to growers and of course themselves during this research. So just imagine, as Red Sea moves towards the future for their goal to drive sustainability and food security, they can combine their hardware technology stack with the software of Cortex and the big data over many years to guide growers how to grow the best products possible. And as Richard says at Red Sea, that's the boom. So keep an eye on Red Sea because they're growing and growing all around the world.